morning, good morning, good morning, Crossroads. For everyone here and everyone watching online, it is time to praise the Lord our God together. So let's set our hearts on one, on, on one accord right now. Let's just think about the goodness of our God and let's open up our mouths and just begin to praise him where you are right now. We say, Father God, you are so good. Oh, Father, your love is everlasting, Father God. We just bless you for your goodness, for your great love, for your sacrifices for us, Father God. While we were yet sinners, you manifested your love towards us, oh, Father, and you had Christ die for us, Father. There is none like you. You are good. You are great. You are faithful, Father God. When we call out to you, Father, we know we always receive an answer. We can cast every care on you, Father, because you care for us, Father God. Your love is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures, Father God. So we bless you, Lord. We give you the highest praise right now. We say hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah, oh God. There's none like you, Father God. We exalt your holy name together right now in the matchless name of Jesus. We bless and worship you. Amen and amen. Come on, cross, put your hands together. Come on, everybody clap. Come on. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Come on, if you know it, say it with me. Oh, oh magnify the Lord. Say, for he, for he is worthy to be praised. He's the only one that deserves worship. Oh, magnify the Lord. He deserves all your praise. For he, here we go, is worthy to be praised. Say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Bless it, bless it, be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Say it again. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, put your hands together. Let's say it again. Say, oh, oh, magnify the Lord. For he, for he is worthy to be praised. Say, oh, 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 magnify the Lord, for he, for he is worthy to be Say it again, oh, oh, magnify the Lord, for he, for he is worthy to be Everybody say, oh, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy, for he, here we go, is worthy to be Say, Hosea, Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Y'all sound good. Say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Everybody lift it up. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Somebody give a praise for being the rock of your salvation. Hey, let's do it one more time. Say, oh, oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, church, let me hear you. For he is worthy to lift up your voice and oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, for he, for he is worthy to one more time, say, oh, oh magnify the Lord, Lord, for he, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on, I can't hear you. Say, oh, oh, oh magnify the Lord. Lord. Here you go, I hear you. For he is worthy to Come on, with the loud voice. Say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, 
Blessed be the rock. Let's do that again. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Say, Hosanna. Lift up your voice and say, Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed, blessed be the rock. Hey. Blessed be the rock. One more time. Say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Put your hands in. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on, everybody together. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Everybody lift it up. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Here we go. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Somebody give a praise in this place. Everybody clap, come on. Everybody clap, come on. Let me see you clap, come on. Jesus is the rock. Come on, that's all it is, say Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Say, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. One more time. Blessed be the rock. Let me hear you say, Blessed be the rock. Lift up your voice and say, Blessed be the rock. Come on, let me hear you say, Blessed, Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on, what's his name? Say, Jesus is the rock. Jesus, Jesus is the rock. Let the whole world hear you say, Jesus, Jesus is the rock. The rock. Everybody say, Jesus is the rock. Come on. Jesus is Jesus is the rock. Somebody give a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Say it again. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. For being your rock. Hallelujah. 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 For being your salvation. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. For being your king. Say hallelujah for being the Lord of Lords. Say hallelujah. 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 Come on. Everybody break out in the praise right there. Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Come on. Somebody give them glory. Somebody give them praise. Come on. He's your rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on. Blessed be. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be. Blessed be the rock. Come on. Say Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Come on. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Let me hear you say Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Jesus, 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 Jesus is the rock. Come on. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on, let me hear you say, Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Come on, last time. Say, Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Somebody give a praise one more time. Hey. Somebody give him honor for being your salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody release your hallelujahs in this place. Come on. Give him glory. Hey, come on. Come on. 
Everybody say bless, 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 we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty. But the devil is defeated. the devil is defeated. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down. Down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must but the be devil is but the devil is defeated. We, we are blessed. Everybody say bless, 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 we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. We're blessed when we come and, and when, when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty. Must but the devil is defeated. But the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're, we're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. You're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come. You're blessed when we come and when you go. We cast down. Every strong sickness, sickness and poverty, and poverty was for the devil, is the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We are blessed. Everybody say bless, 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 it's a new day. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Blowing my way. Blowing my way. It's a season of power. Season no. of power. And prosperity. And prosperity. It's not a it's season. It's not a season. It's already it's on It's already on me. It's, it's not, not a season. season. It's a new day. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. It's blowing my it's way. Blowing my way. It's a season, season of, power. of power. And prosperity. And prosperity. It's, it's not, not a season. It's already on it's me. It's already on, on me. me. Everybody say bless, 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 Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. I got more than enough. I'm coming to give my stuff. I got more than enough. I'm coming to stay with me. I got more than enough. I'm coming to get my stuff. I got more than enough. Hey, I'm coming to get my stuff. I got more than enough. I'm coming to get my stuff. I got more than enough. Say it again. I'm coming to get my stuff. I got more than enough. I'm coming to get my stuff. I got more than enough. Last time. I'm coming to get my stuff. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast Every stronghold, sickness and poverty, but the devil is, but the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. Say, it's He's gonna, gonna work in your favor. Yeah. Say it again, lay, late, late in the midnight hour. God, God's gonna turn it around, and 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 around. Somebody give a praise in this place. Come on. Somebody give a praise in this place. Hey. 
today. God, we bless your name. One more time. Everybody say, late in the midnight hour. Say, late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. He's going to work. He's going to work in your favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, late in the midnight hour. God. God's gonna turn it around, and 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 Hallelujah. Come on. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you come and when you go. Hallelujah. That's a promise that you can hold on to. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him for the promise. Right here, for the devil. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Somebody give him praise for being blessed in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Give him your best praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's a promise that you can hold on to. Hallelujah. You can go to him for whatever you need. It's in his presence. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's in his presence. It's in his presence. Hallelujah. In his presence, there's fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. We thank you. Somebody thank him for his presence. Hallelujah. Hey. God, we thank you for your presence. Oh. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Yeah. It's nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. Nothing like your presence, Lord, all I want is to be with you. your desire to be with you. Presence, Lord, all I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. Worship you, you to worship you, you to be with you. Come on, let's 
sing that together. There's nothing like, yeah. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. All I want, all I want to worship to you. Worship you. There's nothing like your presence, all Lord. I want all I want is to worship you. you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you. You. All I want. You. You. To worship you. your worship. Hallelujah. Thank you for being God. We worship you. Come on, do it for real. Worship him. Come on, worship him in spirit and in truth.
sing it like it's your last time. You are God and we worship and we worship you. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Stay right there. Come on and worship. Come on and worship. We honor your name and worship. We lift up your name and worship. You said if I be lifted up, you'll draw all men unto you. So we lift you up. Somebody lift them up in this place. Right where you are, lift them up. Hallelujah. We give you our heart, oh God. Hallelujah. First, I want to go ahead and read 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things, at all times, you may abound in every good work. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you are able to make. And that simply means that things that might be unfavorable, you are able to make it favorable. We thank you, Lord God, that in all sufficiency, in everything that we need, that the ground is perfect when your hand is in it. We thank you, Lord God, and we put our faith, we put our trust in you today, God, knowing that you are a God that is sufficient that you are able to do above and beyond what we can ask or we can think. We thank you, Lord God, that you don't ever bless a hand that is not open. You don't ever touch a heart that is not open. You do not touch a mind that is not focused on you. So, Father, we give it to you today. We give you our mind so that we can have your peace. We give you our heart so that we can operate in your ways and in your truth. And we thank you, Father, or you are you just glorious God and we thank you for how awesome you are we thank you God that you count it so worthy enough God that we have your instructions that we have your promises that we have your faith and we just thank you for it right now God we glorify you right now in Jesus name amen Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Crossroads. Good morning. Hey, it's great to see you all again here worshiping with us in the service this morning. Special welcome to everyone tuning in online today, and a special welcome to everyone who's here for the very first time. Again, if it's your first time being a part of our service here at Crossroads, we're so glad to have you. Hey, we pray that God talks to you and mentors you in your life in a very special way today and so with that being said we want to make sure that we get a chance to know you after service so if it's your very first time if you would on your way out you'll notice we've got a light blue banner back there that says central hub that's where we want to take that opportunity again to learn more about you and also give you some more information about our church amen well look two quick announcements for you all crossroads i won't be before you long the very first one is i need everyone to repeat after me say all tithe all tithe amen so look we're excited about all tithe and all tithe is our opportunity where we're all partnering together here at crossroads church with our giving we all know that you all do an incredible job here at crossroads allowing us to be able to go out and impact the community and that takes some financial resources and so as god continues to speak to you we're asking everyone throughout the months of june july and august to make sure we're being faithful in our giving and hey watch god give back to you what is yours and so we're so excited for that we're asking everybody to participate with us during all time again so we can continue impacting our community another announcement for you all this morning everybody say game night 
We're excited about game night here at Crossroads Church. And what I'll say is, hey, we do an incredible job of making sure we have fellowship. Here at Crossroads, one of the things I love about Pastor D and Sister Leslie is that we value community and we value relationships. And so our game night is going to be another opportunity for us to hang out outside of Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Amen. Because that's how you build relationships. You got to see people. Got to hang out with them. Know who can cook. Know who might not be good at a certain game. But we do that here at Crossroads Church. And so game night is our opportunity to do so. Details will be announced on CrossroadsATL.com and on social media. And with that being said, you all can make sure you follow us on social media, on Instagram and on Facebook at Crossroads ATL. That's Crossroads ATL on Instagram and on Facebook. Make sure you're following us as you all are scrolling through all the news and everything. The Olympics is coming. Y'all might be scrolling through that too or whatever news you watch. Make sure you follow your church. Amen. Crossroads ATL, we would love to give you all updates and everything regarding that game night coming soon. With that being said, it's so great to see each and every one of you all at Crossroads. Let's go ahead and stand up and let's fellowship and greet each other right now. All right. Praise God. Isn't God good? Isn't the Lord good? Amen. 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 Now listen, we're doing things a little different. It's the summertime. And we're, we're glad that you decided to get out of the bed in your cool house. That's if your AC working, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and come to church. If you here and your AC ain't working, you can because you wanted to get some cool. <laughs> but listen, I, I, again, we want to thank you all for being here, for, for your um, consistency, your faithfulness, and, and serving and worshiping here at Crossroads as we are turning the corner. Uh, toward what God wants us to do as a people of God, and uh, we're excited about what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody tell back to me, we're excited about what God is doing. Amen? And so we, we kind of, we kind of, we, we we're, we're in the midst of two challenges. The, the second challenge I'm going to talk about at the end of the sermon, because uh, I just am, and then this challenge, we, we're asking everybody about this challenge. Y'all remember this? Yeah. All right? What, 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 y'all talk to me. What, what is this? What does this one mean? Plus one, everybody is challenged, listen carefully, to win somebody to Christ or lead somebody back on the path where they're following Christ. All of us, we're asking everybody. Now listen, if you've heard more than four sermons, there's no way you cannot be able to do this. And we listen to sermons all the time, don't we? Come on, man, I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and, and uh, Pastor, uh, I couldn't get the online, I don't know what was happening. I said, oh, okay, well, you know, we are in person. I know we were online for two years, but we are in person. She said, uh, okay, I know, Pastor, I know, I know, but I just want to make sure, you know, because I couldn't get y'all, I just turned over there and started watching Bishop Jakes. All right, praise the Lord. I ain't, I ain't no problem with that. I'm glad you got fed. But I said to her, okay, just, just, just so you know now, we're, we're challenging everybody to use those sermons. Allow God to use those sermons in your life so that you can win somebody to Christ. It should be our life goal. Come on, we just finished singing the song, and I love it. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to do is be with you. You, y'all heard, y'all sing it, right? You. Come on, we sing it. You, you. That's what we say. Listen, and God is listening. Okay, you want to be with me? All right, bring somebody with you. Ah, oh, see, now that's it. No, no, but listen, because that's what discipleship is. That's why we teach at this church. That's why we give you notes. If you don't notice, you have notes. And those notes are for, for you to learn and study. We will forever give out notes. They might not all be in paper, but they will all be at some point. They will be some kind of way you can get that and copy and use it. Because if you're really serious about your relationship with God, those notes are going to come in handy. Because once you start talking to people and God going to send people your way just to say, pray. Pray for me. Will you pray for me? I need prayer. I need help. Right? And sooner or later, we got to say, okay, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to be bold enough to do it. Avery called me this week. Pastor. I said, what, boy? Stop calling me. He said, I could, I could hear in his voice, he said, you ain't going to believe this. I said, what? He said, this guy just walked up to me and started telling me his life. So it was a young guy. Started telling me his life, what he's going through and all this. 
I said, well, what'd you do? He said, I prayed for him. I said, praise God, boy. Yes, that's it. That's what we're, listen. So I'm not in charge of his life. He's not in charge of his life. God is. And God is, God is actually moving in this earth realm. I know y'all don't believe that because we don't hear that enough. We hear social media, we, we hear bad stuff, we hear all, all, it's all we hear. But God is moving. And know what he's doing? He's trying to get people to you so you can get them to him. That's it. That's all he's doing. Right? So, so we want to challenge you all to uh, continue to do that and win your one to the Lord. Amen? So, so you're going to start seeing, we're going to start celebrating people who brought their one. We're going to start celebrating. Yeah, you better go ahead. You got your one. All right. Praise God. We're going to give them a little something, something to keep them encouraged because they brought their one. Right? See, now, I know, Pastor, you sure taking some time with that? I am. You know why? Because it's important to God. It's the people. God loves people. We had, uh, uh, let me say my next announcement. Thank you. I want to thank everybody that showed up at the, uh, the city of Powder Springs. We had our, our event this past week. Yes. And uh, I, I sit on that committee, and we sponsor those events where the fam all fam these families are coming, and it's movie night for the kids, and they got free stuff, and they're giving away stuff, and we're there. We're giving away slime. And so far this year, you got my email, you saw it. So far this year, we've given away 400 little, what exam what are the things called? Ta containers. containers of, of slime. 400, come on, man, yes. Great God. So that means we were able to impact kids. Because listen, the only way... The, there's more than one way than preaching it, people to impact them. Just be kind. Hey, is that, everybody, people will come by asking, hey, can we, is it free? Yeah, go, yeah, get you one. Oh, praise God. Oh, wow, where y'all at? What church y'all? Yes. And we just keep, listen, we just keep giving. We just keep sowing. We keep giving, we keep sowing. And before you know it, Ooh, what happened? Watch, watch, see what happened. Ooh, then two, one, two, three, four, five. People going to start saying, where's your church? I'm coming. Where's your church? Why? Because that's what, that's what sowing does. You always reap what you sow. And so that's what we're doing. We're sowing. So we want to thank you, Crossroads. Come on, give yourself one hand one more time for your faithfulness toward that, and we're grateful. All right, listen, we're ready to get into the Word. We'll raise our offering afterward, and we'll do the final announcements after I finish. So uh, y'all give me about an hour and a half, and I'll get through the sermon. Praise the Lord. And uh, all, the, all the people are like, oh. The visitors are like, for real? <laughs> He gonna take out, no, y'all, we, we, y'all know we don't do that. Praise the Lord. So we started a teaching series last week, I think it was. Was last week Father's Day? Yeah, it was. All right, so, so we started a, a lesson, a, a, a sermon series, and it's called Questions We Are Afraid to Ask. What are some questions that you are afraid to ask? Sometimes we don't know until we are forced to answer some questions. Maybe it's about your health. Maybe it's about your emotional state. Maybe it's about your money. You are forced to ask certain answer to certain questions. So today our question is, can I be totally honest? Can I be honest? Anybody ever ask somebody that question? Can I be honest with you? Oh, come on, man. Y'all see y'all playing today, huh? Anybody? Yeah. You, you've asked, if you have someone that you love or you're in a significant relationship with somebody, you've had to say that once or, two, once or twice. Can I be honest? What are you saying? What are we saying? when we, What we're saying is... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm holding back a level of truth that I want to. But I don't know if our relationship is solid enough to handle it. That's why we ask the question. Because if I don't ask the question, if I just come out with it, then it won't be good. You know, we might end up with a fight or somebody won't, you know, you won't talk to me for four years and all that type of stuff. <sighs> Praise the Lord, somebody. Come on. No, see, listen. The question is, can I? Can I be honest? This, 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 the last couple of weeks, we saw some past, two pastors in, in Texas that I, I love and admire, their ministries, having to step down from their positions for something they did years ago. Right? And I don't know the whole story, and I ain't pretending to know all of it, but they, 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 they chose to step down. You know, part of me was like, I don't know why you're stepping down, but okay, okay, I get it, because, you know, we, got, we, got, we, live, we live in a time of public opinion. You are crucified in the public before anything. So to save the church from going through that, they stepped down. I understand, but I told you all this last week. When we talked about this, can we ask the, uh, the question that we're afraid to ask, is that nobody's perfect. We all got a closet. Amen. Don't be trying to hide your closet. We know you got a closet. Come on. 
I, listen, I, I tell y'all my closet, I'm very transparent. I got a closet. Don't go in there. Don't you go in there. You go in there, you might find some, you might find some things. I ain't did nothing illegal. But you, <laughs> you go in there and start asking people questions. You be like, did he? Yeah, he did. But I'm t- I tell y'all, I was a fornicator. Okay, well, praise the Lord, we can't. Can I be honest? Come on, man. So, don't, so, 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 listen, we ain't totally honest with anybody. Let's just stop for a minute. And can we do a little side note here? Man? We ain't totally honest with anybody. Let's not lie here. Come on. <laughs> that's, why we have, that's why we have therapy. Because we get to a place where there's some things that we, we want to talk about. They need to come out, but they won't come out. So I got to get somebody going to listen to me. And we go to therapy to help so we can be totally honest and we won't get stuck in life and we can let these issues out. That's why it's, 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 it's good. It's, it's real good. But what's sad is, is that too many of our relationships can't handle it, but this little bit of honesty. That's what's sad. We, we can't handle it, but this little bit of honesty. I can't say to you, can I be honest? Your breath. Okay, well, see, y'all want no, see, hey, listen, th- this is the thing that's supposed to make family different. This is the thing that's supposed to make family, because, you see, my brother and sister tell me in a minute, your bre- hey, you need to get some of your breath. No. <laughs> see, y'all fake today, boy. I said we fake. We just got through singing, you know, all I want <laughs> to be, we lying to Jesus. We ain't being honest. All I want to be with you. <laughs> Lord, are we being honest? Do we really want to be with you? I, I don't know, Lord. No, but listen, so our family, this is what makes family different. Our family should be able to tell us, hey, is something wrong? Our family should, and, and our church family too, should be able to, to, to say, hey, hey, you got something, you need to, you need, you, we need to talk. That's why when things happen, if something happens to us and the law has to get involved, who do they go to first? The people closest to you. They call your family. Hey, what's her? She got a mama, daddy, cousin. Who? Let's go talk to them. Maybe they know. Why? Because they, they expect all of us to have honest relationship with somebody. Somebody knew what you were doing. <sighs> but again, what level of honesty can your relationships handle? What level? I love my wife, but I don't tell her everything. She don't know everything about me. Not every little thing. I, I tell a lot of things, but not every little thing. Praise the Lord. No, not, no. She, she don't know everything in that closet. She'll never look at me the same. She, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> oh, now she know a lot. She know a lot, but I can't. No, come on, man. Because, listen. Come in, see, see, Christians, I don't, that's why I don't like Christians. That's why I don't like Christians. See, we so fake. We fake. Come on, man. Listen, she don't know it. She don't need to know it all. I don't need to know all her stuff. I don't need to know. But we have a level of honesty that we operate in that's probably way beyond most married couples do. It is. Because honesty says that I'm willing to confess my sin and my faults before God first and repent. That means change my actions so I don't do that again. Most of the time, listen to this, most of the times we'll be honest about things we're ready to repent about. Let me say that again. Most of the times you'll be honest about things that you're willing to repent or say you're sorry about and change. Other than that, you won't be totally honest about it. That's what the Bible says. I don't know, y'all. I'm reading this real good book on discipleship, and this is what the author said. He said this. He said, in the body of Christ, we view each other as like saints. That's, that's like perfect people. You know, we view each other like that. He said what we should view each other like we're all sinners or ex-sinners. That's how we should view each other. That way we'll be willing to open up. We won't put people on pedestals thinking they're greater than us. They got no sin. Uh-huh. We all got stuff. We all got, that's, why, that's why I love what the Bible teaches about Judgment Day. The Bible says in Judgment Day, it, it says that God says you're going to give account to everything you said. Everything you ran your mouth about that nobody knew but God. He said, you, you don't give an account. That's why, see, that's why I lie, because we can't hide. Can you imagine that? You can't hide. We, 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 we try to hide the things we do. Judas, think about this, man. Judas had the opportunity to tell 11 other guys 
that he was frustrated with Jesus. Because, you know, listen, Peter and them, they wanted Jesus to turn this thing over. They say, hey, listen, turn this government over. You need to turn over this thing. Are you here? You're the Messiah. Yeah. You need, you need to, you need to uh, go to Rome and turn it over. Get us free from this. These people, these people keeping us occupied. They weren't enslaved, but they were occupied. They, they didn't have no government. They had no authority. He said, are you here to do that? Jesus said, no. So I'm, I believe that Judas got frustrated. But instead of talking to the 11 about his frustration, he sold Jesus out. Now, I know the Bible say that he was the son of perdition and he was, this was going to happen. No, no. The Bible reveals. It tells us that he, he wasn't going to change. He would never be willing to be honest with the other 11 about what was going on in his heart. Peter, won, Peter too, because when they came to get Jesus, Peter pulled out his sword and cut that boy's ear. Wow. Wow, they were waiting on Jesus. Let's take over. Yeah. And Jesus said, no, no, and, and went with him. They're like, what? What are you doing? <sighs> Come on, man. <laughs> Whether we realize it or not, stuff inside you will slip out. Yes, it's going to come out. Yeah. That's why I love it, man. One of the most powerful gifts God gave us as brothers and sisters is the ability to confess our sins and our faults to each other. To be honest with each other. Think about it. Wouldn't it be enough if we can just confess our sin to God? That's not I mean, the Bible could say, hey, confess your sins to God, and that's it. That's not what he did. He said, confess your sins to each other that you may be healed. It would have been enough, Mike. Mike, it would have been enough. All I had to do was tell God, hey, this is what's happening to me. No, he said, no, that's good, but take that issue and go to your brother and talk to your brother about it. Oh, my God. Be honest with your brother and your sister. Come on, man. Y'all see the gift in that? It's a gift in that. Let's read it. It's, it's in your notes. James 5, 16, listen to this. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another. You hear that? He said, confess, and then what? Pray. He said, confess, and then what? Pray, pray for one another, that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man or believer can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. You see that? So what is God doing with this? Listen, he's taking a moment that we're willing to open up and be honest with someone. God is taking that moment to show us how intertwined we're supposed to be. Because otherwise, I can just go to God, confess, and that's it. But no. He says, uh-uh, go to your brother and your sister. If you got some issues, get it right. Settle it. Pray for one another well, that you may be healed. What's he showing? He's showing us how intertwined that we are supposed to be. You're not supposed to be isolated by yourself. I got this by myself. I don't need nobody. I'm, I, I got this. You, you. Can, I, can I talk about creation? Can I talk about creation real quick? Let me, let, me, let me just show you how awesome God is. During creation, when God created the animals, he, the Bible says he told, he spoke to the earth and told the earth, told the animals to come forth out of the earth. Now, now picture that. Picture that. He speaks to the earth and says the animals to come forth. Can you imagine lions walking out the ground? Hippopotamus walking out the ground. Squirrels walking out the ground. But that's the, that's the Bible say what happened. So they came forth out of the earth. Oh, my God. Then he made, he told, he, when, he, when it was time to make Adam, he did the same thing. This time he got the dirt. He formed the dirt, formed Adam, and blew into Adam. Adam became a living soul. Then, we know Adam couldn't find no mate among the animals. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to be married to no hippopotamus. <laughs> right? So listen. So then he, he put Adam to sleep. And instead of going to the dirt, he opened Adam up, grabbed the rib out, and made the woman. What was the purpose of that? The purpose of it was this to show us that we, we're supposed to be intertwined. The only way we can become one is that we become intertwined. Only way. Uh, so, 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 get this. So we have these, these movement where, well, let me, let, me, let me say it like this. When he made the female dog and the male dog, he made the male dog, then he made the female dog separate. The only animal or the only being 
that he did not make a separate entity with man. He made a male dog, female dog, out of dirt. When he made the woman, and the man and the woman, he made the man, and from the man, he made the woman. Why? Because we're supposed to be this. Now, this movement that y'all, that we're all experiencing and we're seeing, it's, it's a movement that puts God back in the category of making one being and another being. No, no. No. God, <laughs> did y'all get it? Do I need to break it down to y'all? Okay. So when God made man, he didn't take, it would, it would have been easy for him to just take Eve and make Eve from the dirt. That's not what he did. He took, her, he took Eve out of Adam. Why? Intertwinedness. So honesty is the thing that bolsters our ability to connect. We're, we're fulfilling what God said, and the two shall become what? One. How? Honesty. It starts there. I'm willing to be honest with you. I'm willing to open up and tell you who I am, what I'm about, what I've done. Praise the Lord. Let's talk about it. Can we talk about it now? Okay, good. All right, honestly, listen. It's a willingness to speak the truth about your life so you can be healed and free of sin and secrets. Y'all see that? Honesty is the gift that confession is built on, y'all. We, can't, we don't have confession without being honest. We got lies. If I ain't honest, I ain't confessing nothing. I'm just telling another lie. Uh, any any, any, any uh, old liars in here? Do y'all get redeemed liars? Somebody should say it that way. Should make y'all feel holy. Got any redeemed liars? Just lie in a minute. Come on. You, we look at you. You think you, boy, you just, in your mind, you lying. Oh, <laughs> Listen, confession is built on my ability to be what? Honest. Come on, man. It, it's, as brothers and sisters in Christ, man, we have been given the, given the ability to help each other. We can't allow pride to step in where we won't open up to each other and talk. Come on, man. Apostle, the Apostle James, read it again, uh, in James 5, 16. Listen to what it says. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses. Pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt, persistent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much when put in action and made effective by God. It's dynamic and can have tremendous power. You see that? So James said, hey, this thing is so awesome. It's so awesome. It can have power that can change anything. Anything, it can change anything. Y'all yeah, yeah. hear? So, so, so listen, so what is, what is James telling us? He's telling us that God has placed the healing of trauma and sins in a moment of confession between two brothers and sisters, or two brothers or two sisters. He is, now listen, God is putting in a moment where you're willing to say, you know what, I'm towed down. I ain't doing good to your brother and your sister. And then your brother and sister keeps the secret as if God was keeping it himself. Oh. Come on. That's who God sends in your life. Somebody I can talk to who will, I can tell them something and they keep that secret just like God does. Because y'all know God knows some stuff now. Come on now. Come on, man. Come on, God. Don't, don't be y'all. See, now I know y'all holy. I know y'all holy. Y'all want nobody to know. But listen, God knows some stuff. He knows everything. He knows some things we thought we were going to do and we didn't do. He knows some things that we, we were supposed to do, but we did it. You know, he knows it all. So we can't hide it from God. You, you. This week, honey, can I, I'm, I'm going to tell this. <laughs> Y'all remember the woman at the well? She came, with her, Jesus, Jesus went by some, through, through Samaria, him and the disciples, Jesus was sitting resting, and, and the, the fellas, they went to town, they went to go get some food, and the woman ran up to her, and Jesus said, hey, can you give me some water? She said, uh, you were supposed to be talking to me, you're Jewish, I'm Samaritan. And he said, well, if you knew who was talking to you. <laughs> then he started telling her whole, listen, he started telling her her whole life. She ran back to town and said, come meet a man. That what? He knows everything. <laughs> he knows it all. So, so listen, so, so God knows it all. 
But he gives us the ability to say, hey, listen, I'm going to send people to your life that you can talk to, you can open up to. And it will be as if you was talking to me. The healing power of God will be present as if you were talking to me. But see, well, we, see we, we didn't fell into this whole mold and this whole culture that we live in where we won't open our mouths. We love therapy. Next week, we're going to have a therapist. We'll be here. We'll be interviewing a therapist. So come on. If you, need, you, you have some questions about mental health, come on. We're going to be right here sitting on stage. I'm going to be interviewing her. She's going to be answering our questions. So I want you to be here. It's going to be good. You need, you need a therapist? Go get you one. But in the meantime, you got your good brother and sister? You need to use them. Why? Because God placed healing there. Y'all here? This week, me and my wife was driving. And see, y'all, again, we have, we have a different relationship now. We, 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 we did this ourselves through good counseling, good leadership, <clears throat> all those things. Whew. And she asked me, she said, baby. I said, yeah. She said, is there anybody that you are uh, emotionally attracted to? Like, you know, you physically attracted to? I'm like, what would you ask me that for? <laughs> like, what I do? I mean... <laughs> You know, guys always think that first. What did I do? God, no. I, I'm, I, in my mind, I, I done went through the whole week. Zoom, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, Sunday, did I do this? What I say? Do I look at that? She, I mean, my phone. Listen, ain't nothing on my phone. Okay. But you know, what, you know I mean, my whole mind, I'm going through. Like, what did I say? What did I do? And she, I, she said, no, I'm just, she said, because we used to do this often when we were younger. We would talk about these things. You know, we had a young church. We had a young, lot of people in there, young, a, lot, a lot of young ladies and stuff. They were, I was an elder. They was always in my face and da, da, da. And she would say, hey, you good? Yeah, I'm good. See, that's the level of honesty that we forged in our marriage so that we can say, hey, you have anybody that you got a little something, you, you know, you might. Because see, because you married don't mean you can't have an emotional attraction towards somebody. You just have to be careful. See, that's why I don't like church people, man. That's why I don't like church people, man. Y'all be faking. No, oh, y'all know. Come on, you know, you know. Every time he walked by your desk, you be like, ooh, his cologne, Lord Jesus. Woo! Lord, you got to turn your head, girl. Pat yourself down. I mean, look. His cologne, I mean, his, oh, my God, them shoulders, Jesus. Uh-huh. And then you, in your mind, you start comparing. My husband ain't got it like that, but my God, Jesus. <laughs> Come on, man. Let's be honest, brothers. You know, you walk in, you got to take a second look. I mean, I'm the Lord. I ain't trying to look again, but Lord, Jesus. <laughs> oh, see, we, see, I mean, that's what I'm saying. See, we, fed, we fed. I thank God for my wife. And listen, again, we forge this. We talk about it. We, we say, I'll say, babe, look at that girl. Ain't she fine? Ooh, Lord. She look good. And she said, that's all right. Let's keep going. Let's keep pushing. Amen. And she'll say to me, oh, he's handsome. We, I told y'all that trip that time we went, we, about, we were going to move to Puerto Rico. The company was moving me to Puerto Rico. We were about to move, and we was in Puerto Rico. I had to get that girl out of there. We on the dance floor. I don't know where we was at. We, our hotel, it was a big old hotel, and it, they had a gambling and all that. They had a little dance. We were dancing, right, baby? We were doing a little, little salsa thing, and we were just having a good time. And these good-looking Puerto Rican boys, they were so good-looking. Them boys were good-looking, hear me? And they said, like, oh, he cute. Oh, he cute, too. Ooh. I said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Focus, <laughs> right here. <laughs> Remember, we, we got two kids back at the house. DJ wasn't even born yet. We got <laughs> no, but listen. See, honesty helps us avoid moments of pride. Yeah. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar in the. Do y'all have that? I think y'all have that in your note. Yeah, y'all got it. Okay, listen. So, so what? What God did to Nebuchadnezzar? He fired him and put him in timeout. Why? Because he had a moment where he he got too prideful. And see, when we're not being honest, we're being, you're in pride. You're in pride. And, and pride is the thing that God, the Bible says, he resists. He hates pride. And we're going to go over and tell you why in a minute. But he hates pride, you all. It got Nebuchadnezzar, uh, well, let's read it. We got, to, we got, a, quick, we got a quick minute. Y'all got to say some quick amens, all right? So listen, so as he, the Bible says, as he looked across the city, this is Nebuchadnezzar. He's, you know, he's the leader of the, of the known world at that time, Babylon. It was like America times 10. It was, it, they, had, they had, listen, they had captured, killed kings, killed other nations. They were destroying nations. They were, they were the country back in those days. And he was the king. But God told him, go down to Jerusalem, get them, get Judah and Israel and, and capture them and bring them back with you and, and destroy the temple. 
<laughs> That's what God told him. That's what the scripture says. Y'all read the scripture, right? Yeah. So he now, he's, he's home. He's feeling himself. As he looked across the city, he said, look at the great city of Babylon. By my almighty power, I have built this beautiful city as my royal residence to display my majestic splendor. While these words were still in his mouth, a voice called down from heaven. Now, if you ain't never, if you ain't never had that happen to you, you ain't black. Praise the Lord. Excuse me, all you folks. If you're watching online, I love you, everything. But listen, your mama done told you one time before, you know, you, you did something before that word can get out your mouth. She get, whack out! Y'all ain't never, okay, I'm the only one that did that. I done did something. I done meant to say something. Mama, you got my pow! Like, <laughs> the words didn't get out my mouth good. Mama, I didn't even, <laughs> you don't let me finish the sin. You just, whack out! <laughs> That's what God did to Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible said, while the words was in that boy's mouth. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, this message is for you. You are no longer the ruler of this kingdom. <laughs> God took him and stripped him of his power. You ain't the ruler. Then he says, you will be driven from human society. You will live in the fields with the wild animals. You will eat grass like a cow. Seven periods of time or seven years will pass while you live this way until you learn that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world and gives them to anyone he chooses. Y'all see that? Who rules over the kingdoms of the world? God. So listen, so if Nebuchadnezzar was all that bad, wouldn't the kingdom have fallen apart while he was over there eating grass in time out? No, God kept it together. That's why I don't worry about these political things. People get in these political outbreaks. I don't even mean, man. Ain't, I'm, I'm done with that. I, I see the scriptures. God got this country. He's doing what he does. And he said, I'll raise one up. I'll sit one down. I, do, I got to vote. Yeah, I do all that. But he said, uh-uh, I'm doing this here. So why did this happen? Listen, it happened because the man was full of pride. I was telling Mike this morning, I, I, when I read that this week, I was like, oh, my God. But listen, there's five other times, maybe even more in the Bible, where God did this. He's the only one God let live. The rest of them he killed. I believe today God's still doing that. There's certain folks full of pride. And God, we don't even know it. Because we ain't discerning to know. Okay. Let's talk about why is being honest so important to our lives? Why is being honest? Why do we all need to Listen, it is the key. It is the key we need to defeat Satan. And his, his, listen, these are personal strategies toward you. Honesty is the thing that will stop the strategy that's coming against you. The ones you, you shut your mouth, you don't say nothing about. I'm struggling in my mind. Oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. Listen, it's time to say something. Be honest. Come on. Number one, we acknowledge, <clears throat> this is why honesty is important, we acknowledge the presence of pride in our lives. And we're all prideful people. If you live in America, you pride. Come on. You are. And then you, if you don't know this, pride is the root of sin. It's the thing that gives birth to evil. Pride. Y'all know pride got saved and kicked out of heaven, right? He said, to, he said I'm, listen to what he said. I'm going to make my, I'm going to make my throne like the most high. In other words, I'm going to make myself like him. And God said, excuse me, you going to make who? You, you forget who made you? All right, get out. <laughs> Immediately, he was kicked out. Why? Because God resists pride. Y'all hear with me today? Yeah, so it, it's pride that you have when you uh, you lying. Come on now. Somebody can ask you, man, how you doing? I'm good. You lying. You're not good. That's pride. Boy, it's real quiet. I thought I'd be like, Pastor, you right. You right. That's me. That's me, Pastor. That's me. So we sitting there in church like, Stop lying. Don't let pride sit in. No, open up. Because it is the number one killer of relationships, especially marriages. Especially marriages. Pride is the number one. Let me read the scripture. This is this. This is Proverbs 8. You got to get this now because this is the Amplified Bible. This ain't the NLT. We used to read the NLT. But you got to listen closely and get this. Proverbs 8, 13. Listen. It says, the reverent fear and worship... I'm sorry, let me start over. The reverent fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverted mouth. I hate. You see that? So, so 
The scripture is saying that if I, if I worship and, and love and say I, I follow after God, it means I, 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 I hate evil. I hate pride. I hate arrogance. So that's why we shouldn't allow pride to keep us from being in church. We upset about something. Something. I was talking to a family member. I said, hey, you going to church? Well, no, you know, they just kind of make me mad. I said, what you mad at? But, you know, it's just something. I mean, we're from the South. You're from the country. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the country. I said, listen, let me tell you something. You're going to let that keep you from church? From worshiping God? I thought I said, that's pride. What is pride? What is pride? It, 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 this is pride. Y'all, y'all ready for definition? It said, pride is refusing to recognize God's role in every created thing. Every victory and success and his ability to fix what has been broken. Come on. That's pride. When I don't recognize. See, Satan didn't recognize who God was. He, he said, I'm going to make my throne like his. God said, you don't know who you're dealing with. Nebuchadnezzar would say, uh, uh, look at me. Look what I've done. I've made this great day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. God said, hold on, hold on. You think you did this? Hold on. Let me put you in time out. See, see when we start boasting about the stuff we own and, our, our, you know, we posted it online and we're doing all that stuff and we boasting about we For what reason? Why? Why do I need to show you I bought my wife uh, a Maybach? And then I bought myself a Maserati. What's the purpose? Hey, do what you want. I don't care. As long as your motives are good. If, if you're in there saying, I give glory to God for this thing that I'm going to leave here, and it's going to go to some junkyard when I leave. <laughs> why? Otherwise, why are you doing it? What's the No, think about it, man. Because, see, we're arrogant and don't know we're arrogant. We're doing, we're doing things that, you know, hey, we wanna, I'm going to show you my bling bling and, my, and all that stuff. Why are we doing it? Because we're full of pride. We think we did this ourselves. Come on, man. You, you, you nice looking and you cute and all that. And hey, you go paying and, 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 and you know, you do your thing and all that. What are we doing this for? What's the It's pride. And the Bible says, God, resist that. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. The Bible says, God, no, man, I'm going to use my platform. I'm preaching every time I get a chance. <laughs> I'm posting scriptures. Why? Because I'm about him. I don't care about I'm, It don't matter what people think anymore. It don't matter what I got. We, we were laughing yesterday. We was at a baseball game, right? I got to go. Ooh, time is just. We had a baseball game. My, my friend's in town. His son played baseball. And, uh, you know, we park, we, don't know, we, 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 don't, we ain't baseball parents, we basketball. So you don't park close to the stadium, you like to feel, because the balls come and hit your car, right? So I pulled up, <laughs> I got 275,000 miles on that car, and I ain't, I ain't getting rid of it. No, I ain't ready. I could go get one, but I ain't. So I pulled up, all the new cars, all that. My homeboy, he, you know, he, he driving a rental. He said, uh, hey, the balls are coming, the balls are going over there, boom, boom. And it, it came real close to my car, boom. I said, dead gummit. <laughs> he said, it, it almost hit you. I said, I know, I wish you had it, because I gone again. <laughs> Listen, I don't care. I'm not into the stuff, y'all. It, it just don't matter. I, I know I'm in Atlanta, I, I get it all. But you know what, my wife would tell you, I don't care about that. I don't care about any of that. Because I, I understand the whole truth of this. Yeah. And, and, and if we're not careful, we'll let, we'll let pride slip in. And where pride slips in, God slips out. If you, if whatever you're doing, you're doing it so people can see you and say, oh, you so this. And oh, girl, you that. You, that. you better check your motives. Yeah. Can I be honest? That, that's what we're talking about today. Can I be honest? Can I be honest? Come on, man. Come on, let's go to number two, number two. Why, why, why is uh, uh, honest, being honest so important? Number two, we break the power of pride in our lives. That's a, see, when we're honest, we break pride. We break it because pride must be defeated. It must be defeated or broken with Christ-like character. 
Man, they got our minds so twisted in this world about what's right and what's wrong and all this stuff. We just as crazy as a four-dollar bill. And it's real simple. It's real simple. No offense to anybody. Don't get mad at me. You can write me all you want. I don't care. I saw two dudes in the store the other day. One of them, he's about six foot eleven, big dude. Other dude, he was like this right here. They holding hands. They walking through the thing, sashay. And stuff. And I said to myself, why does it have to be like that? What's the purpose? Well, pastor, hey, listen, I ain't no hater. I understand people got issues and things happen. I understand. I talked about it last week, y'all. If you were here, you knew. I talked about how spirits come on people, and it comes as a child, from a child. That's what the Bible says, right? So, I'm, but, but my, my question was, you choose to do what you want. I don't care. I don't care what they do. They do what they want. But why does it have to be so I'm flamboyant with it so everybody can see me? That's pride. Be who it you want. I don't care. You got to stand before God. But when I got to let everybody see it, and I got to make sure you see me, that's pride. That's not from God. I don't care who sees it. Write me a letter. I'll write you back. Praise the Lord. Which scripture? No, listen, we got to break this thing with, with Christian character. Come on, man. Hey, he, let me just say this, because humility is boring. Okay, I'm about, to, I'm about to, I don't know what y'all got. No, humility is boring, isn't it? It's boring to be humble. It's boring to say, hey, listen, I don't need to do that. To I know who I am. I don't have to do all that stuff. Can we, can we, can we be honest? I, I, don't, I don't have to do, I ain't got to show off and do all and talk about myself. I ain't got to do any of that and be satisfied and happy in life and fulfill all my goals. I ain't got to do it. You ain't got to know everything about me. <laughs> Come on, man. See, what pride has done, it has created bad teachers. And they tell us what to believe. And we just follow love. They lie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's right. Your truth. <laughs> All that junk comes from pride. That's where it comes from. The root of it is pride. Put me on Oprah's show. I'll get on there and talk about it. I ain't scared. I don't care if they don't like me. Don't bother me. I'm from the country. I'll go back to the country. Country people are going to always love me. Praise the Lord. And they'll feed me, too. After they get mad, they, they, listen, they might get mad at me, at Mike, but then they say, you want some food? We got some food. Come on, get some food. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Uh, what's your next point? What's y'all next point? I don't know what y'all got. What y'all got? What's your next point? I got about five of them on here. Y'all got a next one? That's it? Okay, okay, good. Okay, good. So, no, listen. No, man. Uh, <laughs> no, see, listen. Let me, let me say this, and then I'm going to go to number three. I'm going to read the scripture first. Let me read the scripture. This is 1 Corinthians 4 through 7, because we got to break this thing of pride over our lives. We got to break this. It says, is there any reason to consider yourself better than others? What do you have that you didn't receive? Everything you got, you got it from somewhere. That's what Paul's saying. He said, what, what, he said why, why are you boasting? Everything you got, you, didn't you receive that? Were you the author of it? Okay, here we go. If you received it as a gift, why do you boast like something you achieved on your own? Come on, somebody say Christian character. I had a guy call me one time, you know, because we got key words now that we use. It's, it's pride, but we call, it, we call it grinding. I'm grinding. This guy called me one time. He said, I'm grinding, man. I said, what's up, bro? What you feel? I'm good, man. I'm working. I'm working out. He's working all these hours. He's working like 15 hours a day, and, uh, and we were talking. He was just talking. A young guy I had met. And I said, hey, man. I said, okay. I said, hey. I said, be careful now. Make sure you're getting your rest. And make sure you're just talking to him. He asked me some, some, you know, some scriptural advice and relationship advice. And I'm, I'm telling him. And he kept grinding, talking about grinding. And I got to make it happen. And I'm going to do this. And, and I just stopped him and said, hey, hold up. I said, why are you doing all this? Well, I feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. I said, okay, I understand the assignment. But why are you doing it at that level? Because once you go beyond a certain level, you're doing it for yourself. Okay, okay. I thought I'd get an amen on that. No, no, because once you get beyond, you know, because he's, I'm grinding, you know, I got to make it happen. I'm just grinding. I got to. I said, boy, and all your relationships are, are, are falling apart because you went beyond the, a level. You grinding trying to make it happen. I said, I told him, I said, hey, man, that's pride. You need, you, need to, you, need, you need to really pray about that. He ain't calling me back. He won't hear it. Like I said, a lot of this self-centered stuff 
It's not from God. We, we are to renounce self we are to renounce self dependency we have to rely our reliance is on God y'all y'all with me today can I give you one or one or two more points and we'll be done why, why why is being honest so important number three listen we allow humility to govern we should we, we allow humility to govern our attitudes humble people are not deceitful people prideful people are deceitful sneaky you know, going behind folks back talking, saying things. Humble people don't do that. Humble people says, you know what? I acknowledge God as the source of everything I have, good and bad. You, you know what I'm saying? If something bad has happened to me, God allowed it. I give you praise for everything happening to me. Good, the good things happening, God, it was you. You got a wonderful good degree from Harvard, Yale? Yes, that's great. Praise God. I was talking to a young lady this, day, this week. We were at a, 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 a conference for business, my wife's business, and, and, and talking to this young lady, she graduated from big schools, Rutgers and Columbia. And all. We were just talking and having a good time and all that thing. I said, well, you're so humble. She said, I know. Praise the Lord. Good. Yes. She said, God, God gets the credit. She done wrote her own curriculum. All I said, girl, you. She said, God, God. That's humility. When I say, God, you, you, you're the reason why. Can we be honest this morning? Y'all here with me? Come on, man. Listen, because deceitful people are not trustworthy. They're not. Humble people don't take advantage of, of systems. Deceitful, prideful people do and don't think nobody knows. When me and Leslie, when our family was to get ready to move to, did I read the scripture yet on that? No, I didn't. Okay. Listen, when we was getting ready to move to Puerto Rico, Oh, did I say that? I should, oh, okay, yeah, we were about ready to move to Puerto Rico. And, and then we, was about to, we, were, we were working with some other, other small nations, island nations, and we began to see, because we were wondering why certain things weren't happening like they were supposed to be happening. And we figured out, we, we found out that there was some deceit going on. People were lying. Punching in, going home. Wasn't working. Punching in, go work another job and come back. What? So we found all this stuff out. We were like, hey, this is what's going, this is what's happening. Them people were like, oh my God, they were running. I said, how can y'all live like that? Where you're, you're deceiving the system. You're lying. You punch in the work, you're supposed to be working. You don't punch in the work to go get on Instagram. Okay, praise God. Don't throw that at me, praise God. <laughs> no, but listen. But that's what deceitful people, deceitful people are not trustworthy. When you lie and sneak and do little things, and you, that's your little game. That's why you, you see things now. We see people, we got, right here in Atlanta, we got ex-Congress people, I mean, ex-Council people, ex-all these people going to jail for stealing money from PPP and all this stuff. That's deceit. Listen, that's pride. Yeah. Yeah. That's just pride. Come on, man. We, <laughs> no, listen, humility ain't going to lie, allow you to be fraudulent. You should not be able to sleep at night. That's honesty. You should not be able to sleep. I don't need, I don't need, I'm going to go to church, the pastor ain't say nothing. I don't need the pastor to say nothing. The Holy Ghost saying something. What you doing? Stop cheating. I bless you if you stop. That's what God said. I bless. Listen, we were, we were at Walmart yesterday, me and Leslie. I got one more point, we'll be done. <laughs> we were at Walmart. And we're scanning, I'm buying some paper for the church, and, and we're standing in line, and listen, these two boys, two young men, one of them, he got all, now it's 99.5 degrees outside. Oh, it's burning up. You understand? I don't understand how these kids have on the, all these clothes. I mean, he got on sweats and a thing. You can just see his face with a black thing on his head. And the other boy, he got all, and I'm saying, oh, I ain't dressed like that. I'm just looking like, and Leslie walks by me. And she said, excuse me, you know, just, you know, we just, and we, we stand in line and we see him ringing up. We ring it up and we put our stuff in the back. And then the worker come over and he said, are y'all using this one too? We said, no, no, that, that, two boys, what at? These young men. And he said, oh, I ain't gonna worry about it. I said, what happened? He said, they just stole. I was like, like that? Is that easy? Baby, we, can we, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> <I> said, <laughs> they rung it, they rung the thing across, put it in the bag and walked out. They didn't pay. I said, oh, Lord. He's, I said, what y'all? He said, nothing. We ain't going to do nothing. He said, I didn't let it go. They'll, 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 they'll see it. What? Listen, I told Leslie, even when I was young, my conscience would eat me up. I, 
couldn't do it. I could. I would some kind of way sneak back in there and put back what I got if I didn't want to confess. Because honesty before God, again, honesty is the key that opens the door to confession. Listen, I couldn't do it. Did I ever tell you about my fourth grade? The one time in fourth grade? Because you know in fourth grade, you be competing about your grade, you know, with other kids. You want to see who the smartest. That's what the, y'all, anybody, y'all was in public school, praise the Lord. I'm <laughs> but, but listen, come on, man. I was in school, man, and we were math. And I, I you know, I was, I, was, I was at the top. And I, I ain't do good on this test. And so in order to get my grade up to at least a B, one of the answers was F. When the teacher turned, his head, I, turned her head, I went, hey, Miss Scott, you messed up. She looked at me, now she knew. She looked at me with them big old green eyes and said, did you change your answer? No. You did. I said, no, I didn't. And she asked me two more times, and she looked at me, she said, you look at me. Did you change that answer? No. That fourth one, my lips started quivering. <laughs> Did you change that answer? I ain't use words after I just. And she said, I'm gonna change it, but I know you're lying. Look, my, my conscience is already tearing me up. Before she can get the words out of her mouth, then my conscience is already started. That's how it should be with us as Christians. Yeah. We should be honest. Come on, man. And again, these are the things God gives us so we can go and talk to each other and be honest and open up and talk about these issues. Last point. Is this, is this the last point? Last point. Listen. Why is being honest so important? We allow humility to govern our attitudes. That, I did that already. Didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Last one. We allow humility to govern our actions. See, when you're honest, that means you, 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 are, you are willing to become a sincere person. Come on, I love, listen, I love sin sincerity. It's what, it's what the Pentecostal church put inside of me. You be sincere, boy. You don't, you don't, because they put inside of us, you never be the person that causes another person to sin. I went through college, not, not partying. I was, one, okay, one time, one, a little bit, short time, but it's a big time. <laughs> but, but listen, I, I said no to all them parties and all that because I had given my life to Christ and I wanted to really live it and, and I had some friends and, you know, some people that I liked and I just didn't want to, I didn't want to lead them astray. I didn't want them to not know Jesus because of my actions. That's called sincerity. That's what it's called. I want, I want to be such an example to people that I'm going to do what's right so people can, can know who Jesus is. That's sincerity and that's what, listen, that's what that's what honesty gives us. It, it shows how, how, how willing we, we are, are in our actions to be humble before God. Yeah. Listen to this. It's Luke 6, 31. He says this. He says, think of kindness. Think of the kindness you wish others would show you. Do the, do the same for them. That's humility. What you want to see done, what you want to have happen, he said, you do it for others. That's what you want to happen to you. You do that for others. <sighs> Come on, man. See, we become sincere people when we, when we start to allow honesty to get into our actions and not want to be hypocrites. And then, I want to tell this story, about. I want, I want to wait to the end. If I'm, if I'm a sincere person, that means I'm treating everybody, not certain people, the same way I want to be treated. Not certain people, but everybody. Same way. Treat this, everybody the same. Not, not just one person because they this way and this way. No, no. You got to treat everybody the same. See, when I'm honest before God and I know who I am, I, I don't think I'm, I'm better than everybody else. See, when, when, you, when your mindset is all that, you treat people different. Based on status and all that stuff. No, the scripture said the same way you want to be treated, that's what you treat. That's what humility does. And that's what happens when I be honest with myself and say, you know what? I, I look at them a certain way. Because they, they don't drive like we drive. Or they don't live on the side of town we live on. Amen, Pastor Dan. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Let me tell you the story. I'm, I'm uh, move on. 
When I was in corporate America working, I had a good position and a good job and good money. I, I told y'all this story. And there are times, man, I was in, I was in the presence of some people who got a lot of money, a lot of money. And there are times where I felt like, man, I don't need to be here because these people are just loaded. And I felt like I was from the, you know, I, you know, I was from the, I was from, <laughs> I'm from the lane in Valdosta, you know what I mean? You won't call it the hood, but it's the lane. But I'm in the, I'm in the presence, listen, of billionaires. Here I am, standing in there, talking to these guys. Some of them are arrogant, some, but I meet this one guy one time. He walks up to me, everybody talking now. I'm with my boss, and he says to me, what's your name? So we talking, talking, talking. What do you do? And I told him what I did. Okay, okay, good. And so he talked, what, and then he, he, and you know when you're talking to somebody with, with, got some status? Because he said, what's your dreams and vision? What's next for you? See, them guys never stop thinking about what's next. He said, what's next? That's why I begin to talk about education and some of the things about you. He said, okay, good, 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 good. You're on the right track, young man. Stay, never treat, and say, so until later, my, my boss said, you know who that was? No. He said, whatever, I can't remember. He said, he a billionaire. He never made me feel like I was this big. He never made me feel like you don't belong here. No. See, honesty for us, y'all, opening up and being honest for us, it benefits us in more than one area of our lives. So it doesn't do us any good to walk around here mad, upset, beaten up, all that stuff, and won't talk to anybody. We rob ourselves of some moments that will heal you so you can go be what you God have called you to be. Because a lot of times we want to be what all these preachers are saying. You can go be great and all that stuff. You get there and you get messed all up, then you got to come back down here. You ain't great no more. Why? Because we, we don't know how to be honest. We got to learn how to be honest. Did you receive something today? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for who you are, what you've done. Thank you for your word that we learned today. Help us with this little small lesson, how to be honest. Can we be honest? First, Father, help us to be honest with you. You are the head of our lives, the one while we're here. We give you honor and praise for who you are, what you've done. You're so good to us. You bless us. Teach us how to be honest with our brothers and our sisters at all times, that we might live a life pleasing to you. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, if you're here today, I'm going to ask you an honest question. If you die tonight, would you open your eyes in heaven? Or would you open your eyes in hell? Do you know for sure that you will, that you will make heaven if you die tonight? And, but today you say, I'm going to be honest with myself. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, if you just raise your hand. Just raise your hand, wherever you are. All right, Father, so we thank you for everyone that's here that's, that's a Christian. They were honest with themselves. I pray that they're sincere in their hearts really do know who you are in Jesus name amen all right listen we are a church and we are a good church praise God God is doing great things with us and among us now I, I want to say this to you all um, if you're looking for a good church we're a good church my mother-in-law said something to the other day when we were in Bible we were in reach not what reach what's that life groups and she said for three years we were in school studying the scriptures. While everybody was in COVID, we were, we were studying the scriptures as a church online. And it has laid a foundation that we were able to build on. We are a good church. If you want to be a part of this good church, right after service, you see these three people, I want you to come up, talk to them. They're going to take you to the central hub. They're going to give you some information what it means to be a member of our church, a partner with this ministry, so that we can make a difference in the lives of people. Amen? If that's you, right after service, just come on up. Right? And talk to them. They're going to come back up. They're going to go sit down in a minute. But they're going to come back up, and then you, we'll take you in the back and tell you what it means to be a part of our church. Amen? Can we give the Lord some praise? Y'all can have a seat. All right, listen. It's time for us to re receive God's tithes and God's offerings. There's several ways you can give here at Crossroads Church. Hey, put, put my, my total up. But th this is what you're going to hear starting in a couple weeks. Now, now, next week we have, I told you we have a therapist coming. Right? She's a part of our church. We're going to be interviewing her next week. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be good. We were talking this week. Ooh, it's going to be crazy. So I'm going to be interviewing her. We're going to be talking about therapy and talking about the Christian perspective on therapy, why, why it's good, why it's, you know, all this type of stuff. All right? But this is our goal, for our weekly goal, y'all. Right? Because we got to get our own place, man. Come on. Y'all ready? 
Oh, yes, yes. We got to get right. This is our weekly, this is our goal. We're not ashamed to admit it. And so what we've asked everybody to do, we're starting a project. It'll be starting in next month. It's called Project 5200 Plus. One. Come on, let me try one more time. It's 5200 Plus. Plus one. So we're believing God every every uh, a week when we come through here, that's what we receive in our offerings. $5,200 so that we can get our own building and we ain't got to tear down and set up. We can come and pray. We can do all those things, all right? So what we're asking everybody to do is that every Sunday that you come, if it's not your time to give your tithe and your offering, give, give an offering in an increment to five. It could be $5. It could be $50. It could be $500. It could be five thousand dollars. It could be five million. It could be twenty-five. Y'all get y'all get the drift. So that's what we're asking everybody. Because listen, it's important that we do it. How? Together. We got to do it together. If we do it together, it'll happen like we want it to happen. But we got to we got to do it how? Together. So I, I told I already told the finance team that today we should have if nobody else if nothing else we should have a bunch of fives. A bunch of five people give five five five. Why? Because that's what we're gonna do together. Amen. So there's ways you can give. Come on, give, me, give it back to me so we can get out. All right. Crossroads, you can give at uh, Crossroads ATL. That, no, that's Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign, Crossroads ATL. You can use, give using Cash App, or you can give at crossroadsatl.com slash give. That's our website. Or if you want to give, if you already prepared your, your tithes and offering through a cash or check, you can do it. Just fill out the envelope, and the ushers are going to take it up in a minute. All right? Yes. Huh? Oh, or you can give by Zelle. Yeah, Zelle. I forgot about Zelle. It's my new friend, Zelle. You can give by Zelle. Just scan this barcode. It's on our website, too. You can scan the barcode and give. If you want to give during the week, you can still use those, those methods during the week and, uh, and also give, too. All right? So y'all ready to give? Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. We're going to stand. We're going to read our confession, and then we're going to pass our gift. We're going to say our benediction. We're going to be out of here. Praise God. All right, you ready? Let's, let's say our confession. Father, we thank you for your love and faithfulness toward us. Our lives belong to you. We are obedient to your word. Bless in our homes and our relationships and our finances. We give the best. We live the best. We have the best. According to your word. And we win all the time. All the time we win. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right, listen. Uh, you may have your seat real quick. They're going to come by. If you, we, you can pass. Y'all can do it standing up. Okay, you, just keep standing then. Just pass your offering over. If you have, you've given by check or cash, if you're giving, if you're giving online, we, we're grateful to it. We're grateful to you for it. And uh, I'll just knock this off again. So and we're, going, we're, we're grateful for what God is doing to us and for us and in us. Amen. And all that. All right. Let's, let's pray over our offerings. And then we're going to be ready to go. Father, thank you for those that give and continue to give and support this church. We're so grateful. Thank you to those that give during the week. And those that give online, crossroads online, we haven't forgot about you. We thank you for how you support our church. Bless them. Cause them to be a blessing. And we thank you for all you've done and what you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we bless you as you leave this place, never the presence of God. We bless you. We bless you this week as you, as you walk in and out the grocery stores and as you walk in and out of your home, the different places you go, that God will be your protection. As we go everywhere we go, God is our protection. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you all next week.